Everybody that has come in contact with him, with the boards, um, coming into town hall, he's, he's had to ride roughshod pretty much on a lot of different things, and he just handles himself so well with people. Down at the MMA meetings, it always amazed me how his colleagues spoke so highly of him. Um, they looked to him for guidance on different things, and... the years that you have given us. Thank you. Okay, at this time, Select Board Chair David, David Phil would like to give a State of the Town report. It's nice and short. I'm not sure if 90 is better than 40, but uh, I'm cold. So uh, I just wanted to quickly say thank you to all of our town employees, the uh, inspections, fire, police, Board of Health, all the town employees that have been flexible and working more hours than you could ever imagine to get our businesses back open uh, whenever possible and keep them open with all the changing conditions that are uh, happening. And also to say thank you to all the boards and committees that make this town work because uh, most of them don't receive a penny of pay, but uh, this year obviously has been a year like unlike any other, and uh, we've made it work, and the town's in great shape because of that. So that's all I have to say, thank you. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go over the rules of decorum for the meeting. The meeting will be conducted according to town meeting time rules. If you wish to speak to an article, please stand at your seat and wait to be recognized by the moderator. Someone will come to you with a microphone, which will be sanitized after every use. State your name and residential address each time you have been recognized to speak. Keep all comments relative to the article or motion at hand. Do not disrespect any person, please. Do not refer to any previous speaker by name. Please use previous speaker instead. You may speak as many times as you feel is necessary, but please give others a chance to speak before returning to the microphone. If necessary, I will ask you to wait until others have had a chance to speak. Direct your comments to the moderator. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less. All amendments must be submitted in writing to the moderator as soon as the amendment is offered. And please turn off all your electronic devices. Okay, we're going to start the meeting with the consent agenda. Everybody should have that. I'm just going to explain what the, what the consent agenda is and then we'll go through it. Warned articles on a consent agenda are exceptions to the general process of town meeting. The select board, moderator, and finance committee identify for town meeting consideration those articles that they believe should generate no controversy and can be properly voted without debate. These articles are put on the consent agenda to allow motions under these articles to be acted upon as one unit and to be passed without debate. At the call of the consent agenda, the moderator will read out the numbers of the articles one by one. If one or more voters object to any particular article being included in the consent agenda, they shall say hold in a loud voice when the number is called. The article will be removed automatically from the consent agenda and restored to its original place in the warrant to be debated and voted under the usual manner. After the calling of the individual items in the consent agenda, the moderator will ask for a motion that the voters pass all items remaining as a unit on one vote. Use of the consent agenda makes the town meeting more efficient by speeding up the handling of non-controversial items. The consent agenda also includes the procedural motion to allow the department heads to address town meeting from time to time for information. So, the consent agenda motion is move that the town take articles 1, 3, 4, and 5 out of order and that they be passed by consent in accordance with the motion shown on the consent agenda distributed this morning. 
and further allow all officers, department heads, and agents of the town to address the town meeting on matters as may be informational. Do I have a motion? Second. I have a motion and a second. I will allow Mr. Nixon to explain these things because inevitably somebody wants to know what it's all about. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thanks everybody for those kind words. It's been an uh, honor and a privilege to come to work every day for the town of Hadley. You have a great community, and I'm proud to have uh, helped you move forward in any way that I possibly can. Article 1, uh, prior year, year bills. We received three bills after we closed the FY20 budget books. Two for chemicals at the water and wastewater treatment plant, and one for um, maintenance at a cemetery. Uh, so we need a uh, vote to pay these uh, vendors. Article 3 is the sweep article. This is something that we should uh, put on every single town warrant. It's uh, old productive, uh, non-productive um, pots of money being returned to their original source. Uh, total $14,568.07 in cash goes back to the respective uh, Pots of money, capital stabilization, and CPA. And then borrowing that we don't need, uh, uh, $24,050 total that uh, we don't need, and so that can be taken off the books. Um, a revolving fund for the building inspector for their on, uh, online uh, permit software, uh, allowing them to spend up to $10,000 a year to uh, pay for the software fees associated with that project. And then finally, a transfer of free cash of uh, $1,410 back into the CPA for uh, maintenance that wasn't CPA eligible but was charged to CPA. So we're just making that uh, project whole again. Any questions? Any questions from anybody on that? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by raising your cards, please. Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to Article 2. Move that the town amend the fiscal year 2021 general fund budget in Article 8 of the annual town meeting warrant held on June 20, 2020 as follows. Raise and appropriate and transfer from available funds the estimated amounts in Article 2, Table A as presented at the November 14, 2020 special town meeting and incorporated by reference herein. What that means it's in your warrant that you have. And the select board recommends this 500. The finance committee recommends this 500. Do I have a motion? Second? Second. Okay, a motion and a second. What are we doing here? We're going to explain that. Thank you. You bet. Okay, Mr. Nixon, I believe this is yours. Making adjustments to the budget that we passed at the annual town meeting back in June 20th, 2020. Um, first thing is, is that the budget is balanced, so the, the adjustments that we're making have to do with the impact upon the taxes that uh, you're expected to pay for the rest of the year, uh, as well as the, to address a couple of uh, issues that came up when we were uh, uh, when we started making the new buildings operational. Um, we're increasing the select board uh, by $2,500 for IT purposes. The North Hadley Fire Substation increases $7,500 for utilities. Senior Center increases $3,200 for utilities. And the library increases by $1,600 for utilities, mainly propane. And then $990 for internet was not associated with the CW Mars system. Debt is decreased by 176,101 by deferring principal on the tax rate for one year, with the eye towards reducing the tax burden 
on businesses in the average single family household. Stabilization at $530,000 is used in order to keep the tax impact for the average single family household even with last year's taxes. We're in difficult times uh, financially for many people and whatever we can do to mitigate the impact upon the amount of money you write for, uh, in your checkbook for taxes. That's what we're trying to achieve here. Um, there's no promise that about next year, this is, you should probably look at this as a one-year uh, uh, contribution towards keeping the taxes as even as possible, but we will try to keep next year's tax impact as little as possible as well, but no promises at this time. Thank you, Mr. Nixon. Anybody have any questions? Hang on, Molly. Somebody will come to you with a microphone. If you have a question and you're outside and you cannot see me, I cannot see you. So move one way or the other so I can see you if that's the case, please. Uh, excuse me, name and address? Oh, I'm not going to get that. Uh, Molly King in 16, Hadley Place. Okay, I want to offer a friendly amendment to the uh, proposed article. And I just would like to offer that one number on um, um, the table, table A be changed. And that's the amount that's proposed to come from the stabilization account. Um, and have that go back to the original proposal um, and fix that at the 375000 so it's a reduction of 155,000 from stabilization, and I'd like to explain why. Speak louder? Okay, great. Um, so my reasoning behind that is, um, first of all, I commend the Select Board and the Finance Committee for dealing with an unbelievably difficult financial situation this year. So many moving parts, and I think that the idea of taking the 375 from stabilization because it's are going to be actually returning that money eventually. Um, makes an awful lot of sense and it's unbelievably helpful to the taxpayers. And, and I agree that there are many people who are struggling. Um, what I take exception to though is the idea of taking another 155 on top of that. Um, under the proposal of the 375, the tax rate was going to go down from $12.78 to $12.15. The additional 155 further lowers the tax rate from $12.15 to $12 even. I think it's well intentioned, but I don't think that there was adequate discussion at the select board and finance committee meetings about this, because I don't think it was fully thought out. Um, the rationale is that the um, taxpayers most impacted and may be struggling uh, because of their valuations on their properties going up, um, that this would indeed keep taxes flat. The reality, um, and this is based on conversations with um, the assessor and collector's offices, is that we will actually see a thousand residential properties taxes go down. And the average savings for taxpayers is going to be anywhere in the nature of $30 to $50 per year. Um, so the people who benefit mostly from this are going to be people with, you know, brand new construction that's come online, or people who did um, a lot of remodeling, you know, Situations blown up by that amount, but not really the average taxpayer. And I don't mean to sit at thirty or fifty dollars. That's important. But when you average that out over the course of the year, you're talking about maybe a dollar a week. Um, and if you have your money put into an escrow account, your bank, the bank's probably not even going to adjust the mortgage payment for that amount. So my preference would be to leave the hundred fifty-five in stabilization, but can do far more good for the town. Um, because the town's going to be in a very difficult situation next year. We all know what revenues are coming in from what's happening else. And the budget cycle is going to be difficult. If I were a department head right now, I would be really uncomfortable having that amount of money coming out of stuff with stabilization. As everybody in town meeting knows, that's our only backstop and bad things can happen. So I would rather see that money next year being used potentially to save off layoffs. Um, or keep services going intact in case our revenues aren't there. Okay, can you wrap it up? You can talk again. Okay, sure. So, yeah, just in conclusion, I don't think that um, there's an urgency right now. According to the collector, taxes are pretty close to 100% of 
protection. And once that $155,000 is gone from stabilization, it's gone. Okay, thank you. I have a motion to amend Article 2. Does anybody want to second that? Okay, I have a motion and a second. Now we can discuss the amended motion. Oh, Molly, can I have that, please? Even though I, I know I have something that's probably exactly like it, but this was an anticipated amendment, so I, I believe I have the amended motion. And meals tax, which represents 1.3 million of revenue. And in, 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 I'd like to hear the answer because it affects my support for the amendment. Sure. I'll see if I can find somebody to answer that for you. Anybody have the knowledge? Mr. Nixon. The first part of that question is the likelihood of a Proposition 2.5 override. That is a decision, that's a policy decision that the select board would make, have to make and be supported by the voters. Um, so that's a, that's a policy decision. I don't have the answer on that. Uh, with respect to the meals and room occupancy tax, uh, we have revenue numbers through October. So we have the first third of the fiscal year 
Uh, last year, we projected that we would lose about 50% of our hotel occupancy revenue and about 75% of our, of a, rather, about 35% of our meals tax. Based upon those uh, reduced expectations, the October numbers show that we are pretty much right on track. So those predictions at this point in time appear to be uh, accurate. Uh, whether that, whether that's going to that situation is going to improve in the future, time will tell. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, Steve Mumlo, One West Street. Uh, I'd like to commend the entire board and finance committee for the fine financial condition that we're in here in the uh, town of Hadley. Uh, but the, I support the amendment to the proposal. Uh, we do not know what next year is going to be like, and if it gets worse, people will be in more dire straits, be less occupancy, less restaurant business, and yet we will have already spent our seat for it. I think that is not an appropriate uh, way to manage the situation, even though it's been handled well today. If things get better, it'll be the exact time when we come back to all the citizens of Hadley and ask them to put more money into the kitty. More people could be laid off, and things could get the worse. microphone closer to all that whole thing they can hear. Yes. Yeah. And if we keep our sea corn dry, if things get worse, then we will see ourselves through this. If we start spending our excess funds and things get worse, the only way we can continue with what we have is to ask people to put in money when they're probably less capable of putting in money than they are today. Thank you. Mr. Waskevitz. We have worked pretty hard on these budgets, and the problem is the state's digging into their rainy day fund also. And their level funding in the state right now at 5% above the budget they have right now. What we're doing is try to level fund what we've got right now without cutting positions, departments, and uh, services to the citizens. There's uh, too many people here on fixed income that can't afford what they're paying now. Other folks are paying their taxes for them. This just, it has to stop somewhere. It, it's, if it does get worse, it, it's only going to get worse for everyone, not just for us in town right now. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Parmar. Chardieu Parmar, 72 Mirror Road, Hadley. My family owns the, some of the hotels that earns the occupancy and meals tax for the town. We've been here for 32 years and built uh, many of the hotel and hospitality infrastructure for this town. And I will say that this has been a disaster for my family. This crisis has decreased our family in, in, to the point where we have laid ourselves off and ha I haven't collected a paycheck for over six months. I have made, and my family has made significant sacrifices just so that we can sustain our staffing and our people. I've had to lay off people that have worked for me for 30 years since I was a little kid. And I know I'm not alone in this. There are other people that have child care issues, not because they don't send their kids to school, it's because their child care person is an elderly person that they can't risk getting infected. So that term, what that in turn does is takes a family that's earning income for, with two people and turns it to one. And for us to go and say that we can afford $50, maybe everybody here goes to Starbucks, but I don't. And I go and try to save money and keep my resources and my family business sustainable. And I try to do everything I can so that to save my business. So this amendment lacks the empathy for the people that are actually suffering for this. Because I am dealing with this every single day. I am the one, and my family are the ones that are getting panic attacks every single day trying to deal with the, the, the pressures that we have. And so 
I emphatically say no to this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dickiewicz. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Dan Dickiewicz, 130 Hockenham Road. I completely agree with the previous speaker. We have a chance to have, a, in, with his words, empathy for all of the less fortunate in this town. Uh, we, we have a level funded budget, uh, according to uh, Select Muscovitz. So I do not support this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moriarty. George Moyarty, 22 Chamorro Road. I agree that we have a, uh, basically a level-funded budget, and some people, it sounds like, uh, it's afraid to give money back to the taxpayers of Hadley. I looked through the budget, Article 7, there's a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff, some of it's media, some of it's stuff that the town needs, but I didn't see a lot of stuff being cut. Everybody here probably didn't go out and buy a new vehicle this year, but we're buying two or three and lawnmowers and everything. So I think some of this money needs to go back to the taxpayers of Hadley and not keep going for, for stuff. It, it just doesn't look like people in this town have uh, cut the budget. And now there's an article that's going to level fund it, and we, we have issues with it. So I agree with the original uh, article, I think this amendment should be uh, voted down. Mr. Waskevitz. Yeah, that was, the, the, that was the point I was just going to try to make. Um, we're, we're, we went along with this level budget, trying to be middle of the road with everyone. It, there are some people that can afford it, and I'm happy for them, but there's other people that cannot. Our businesses are only running, actually, right now, at about 60%. So we don't know what the revenue is going to be next year. I, I hate to disagree with you, David, but that number that you brought out is, is wrong. So, uh, you know, we, we're going to be looking at tough times for another year or so, even. So we, we need to do what we, we can for the taxpayers at this point. Thank you. Okay, after him, Mike, there's somebody out back. Chargeable from our 70 tomorrow road. I just brought, I just wanted to add one more thing. This represents less than 10% of the rainy day fund. That's what we're borrowing. We're, we're borrowing roughly about 8% of the taking from that fund. So there's so the, to think that we're gonna run out of money next year or, or the year after is ludicrous. So I, I just want to make sure everybody understands that in relation to what we're actually taking, it's actually a very small, small amount of money. So, thank you. Thank you. Got somebody in the way back. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. Um, this is a point to process. The people in the back here are hardly able to hear. We've been able to hear most of the people who have taken the mic on the floor, but I would really request that everybody on the board and at the front, please speak as slowly, loudly, and crisply as you can, because I've been able to understand the commentary, but I have yet to understand what the amendment is. And if you could please repeat it, Loudly, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, do you have the amendment in your warrant? Michelle, you don't have the original amendment in your warrant? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the table that she needs to look at. Well, right, no, I understand that. That's why I, I want her to look at the, the article because she doesn't have the amendment. I want her to look at the stabilization line of $530,000.
And the amendment is bringing that down to $375,000. Okay? You good? All right. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to say on this amended article? Molly. Okay, thank you. I'll try to yell as much as I can. Um, just a couple of other points. Um, again, I, I don't think anybody's trying not to be empathetic, but the reality is probably the best thing that can happen for folks is if anybody does get into a hardship situation, we have a tax collector in town who has done an amazing job year over year of working to help people get into payment plans. And if you're having trouble making your payment, you know, the amount of the bill is oftentimes less important than just the manner in which you can pay it off. And I know that Sue Golatsky is very much committed to continuing her good work if people are struggling as we get into next year. And I also just wanted to point out that the reality is what we're looking at and the discussion that took place at Finance and Select Board is there's an extremely high likelihood that next year our taxes are going to go up significantly. Um, and that, you know, we have to stay within the levy limit, but they're probably going to need to max it out. And then there's also conversation about sewer rates going up. So I know it seems like a small, you know, percentage of the budget, but again, leaving that 155 in place in stabilization gives a little bit more breathing room next year. I mean, I just hate for people to have kind of the, you know, dopamine hit of, great, we only have a $12 tax rate, and then next year, people are gonna forget what happened today when their new tax bills come out and there's a shock. So it's just trying to smooth out the ride. The ride's gonna be bad no matter what. Thank you. Mr. Phil, be right with you. David Phil, 39th Avenue Road. Um, the previous speaker mentioned the sewer rate increases, and that is true. Um, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you you're not going to pay another penny next year either. Uh, this is a one-time infusion of money from stabilization. So, but we're dealing with the facts we have now and the situation we have now. The DPW director is going to ask for a 15% increase in sewer bills for FY22. I'm sorry, FY, yeah, FY22 and then another 15% on top of that in FY23. Granted, that needs to come in front of the select board and, and go through the whole process, but this idea that we can pay a little more here, pay a little more there, it all adds up eventually. And this year, if any, is the time to give tax break, the taxpayers a break. Thank you. Mr. Devine. Jerry Devine, 106 West Street in Hadley. Uh, in taking the 500,000 out of the stabilization this year, does it affect our bond rating at all? Mr. Nixon will answer that for you. Uh, we just recently had our bond rating reaffirmed by S&P Global at AAA status, which is the highest possible bond rating. Uh, our financial advisors tell us that they understand that we can't do the things that um, most towns can't do the things that they need to do in order to maintain good credit rating that is fully funded, funding their OPEP uh, contribution and not spending from stabilization. Everybody recognizes that towns have to do those two things. They have to not keep track of OPEP and take from stabilization. The bond rating agencies are okay with that so long as you have a plan for future returns to those good management practices. We've articulated that plan in a couple of written documents, so we know what, what we need to do in order to get back on track. Thank you. George Jumbo. Hello. So. Who are you, where are you? Oh, from? I'm Joyce Chunglo, 181 Bay Road. Um, I think what people are missing here is that the 375 is going to go back into stabilization at the end of June. And the $155,000 that is the offset that makes the 530 
Um, we're going to try and see where we can get money to put that money back into stabilization again. So everything is like on a whim. So if you take the 530, you get $12 tax rate. If you get the, if you take the 375, you get a 12, 15 tax rate. So th there's your difference between the two. Um, it's not that much of a difference. It's $52 this year, but next year there's not a guarantee that it won't go up to $300 on your t uh, extra in your tax bill. So those are the things that you're going to have to vote on and think about when you do this amendment right now. Thank you. Mr. Maximowski. Jim Maximowski, 12 Norwater Drive. I move the question. Okay, motion to move the question. Second. Pardon? Okay. Takes two thirds to pass this motion. So we have a motion and a second to move the question. All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Any opposed? So that's 122.4, motion passes to move the question. All right, so now we're going to vote on the amended article. So this requires majority, correct? Okay. So all those in favor of the amended article signify by raising your cards. I can't hear what you said. Somebody has a question, I cannot hear it. Hang on, put, put your cards down for a minute. Somebody had a, it sounded like a point of order kind of thing. Say that again. Shell Horowitz, 16 Barstow Lane. What I heard you call for was to vote on the amended motion, and yet we haven't voted on the amendment itself. Don't we need to do that first? Yeah, but the question, the calling, Jerry, is whether we vote on the amendment, no? No, we're voting on the amended motion. I'm sorry, Shell, you're correct. So, we're voting on the amended motion. So, all those in favor? Motion. Okay, we're voting on the motion to amend. I'm saying it incorrectly. Sorry. Okay, do we... Are we all on the same page? <laughs> no? Okay, so we're voting to amend Article 2, the line of stabilization from $530,000 to $375,000. Everything else stays the same. Oh, wait, oh I'm sorry. Where's that? Oh, I... Okay, so raise and appropriate changes also. Do we need, you want me to read this whole thing? <laughs> yes. Right, we're voting on the amendment right now. Okay. All right. So, all those in favor of the amendment, signify by raising your cards. All those opposed to the amendment. Okay, that requires a majority. The majority rules. The amendment fails. Okay, now we get back to the original motion. 
the original article. Okay, article two, the original article. So, what what do people want me to? I mean, are we are we good understanding what that is, or do I need to explain something? We're good. Okay, so we're going to vote on article two. Yeah, this requires two thirds. So, if you're all those in favor, signify by raising your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Okay, that's uh, 122 in favor, 8 against, motion passes. Okay, moving on to Article 6. Select board recommends this 500. Finance committee recommends 500. Move that the town reduce the rate of interest that accrues on property taxes deferred by eligible seniors under General Law Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 41A, from 8% to 4%, with such reduced rate to apply to taxes assessed for any fiscal year beginning on or after July 1, 2021. Do I have a motion? And a second? Motion and a second. Joyce Chungo and Dan Zadonik will explain and answer any questions on this one. The assessor introduced this article to provide relief for income qualifying seniors who have opted to defer their residential taxes. Interest on any deferred amounts owed to the town occurs at 8%. The town may choose to drop that interest rate and the assessor is recommended 4% or 5%. And we're doing 4%. Anybody have any questions on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Article 7 is capital expenditures. There are six sub motions in this article. They are uh, Select Board recommends 410, Finance Committee recommends 500. Capital Planning Committee recommends 300. All these different uh, all these different motions require a two-third majority. So I'm going to read the first one. Motion 7.1. Move that the town transfer $25,000 from water reserves for Callahan Well Number no. 1 reconditioning for the Department of Public Works and $18,000 from Hadley Media Reserves for equipment for Hadley Media. Do I have a motion? That one's a majority? Okay, that one's a majority, okay. Do I have a motion? A second? Okay, I got a motion and a second. Mr. Stanley's gonna explain what we're doing here. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, I'm sure these will be um, controversial over where the funding sources for all these things are coming from. So for the first article here, these two items, the Callahan well, um, number one is scheduled for reconditioning to keep it in good working order, and then Callahan well number two will be reconditioned the following year. These are annual things we take out of the capital budget that come from the Enterprise Fund reserve account in order to pay for these well reconditionings. The second one, the $18,000 from Hadley Media Reserves for equipment for Hadley Media, that is money for equipment that comes out of the reserve fund for Hadley Media, so that's an Enterprise Fund. So 
both of these accounts are taken from, for the case of water, from our water um, rates, the water payments we make, and for Hadley Media, that comes from um, Charter, who you know it pays a fund in order to have the cable service here in Hadley. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Motion 7.2. Move that the town appropriate $63,000 to pay costs of purchasing and equipping a cruiser for the police department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 7, 1 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? And second? Thank you, Mr. Stanley. All right, if for any reason you can't hear me in the back, somebody just give me a wave and I'll, I'll try to be louder. Um, this motion 7.2 is for the purchase of a police department cruiser. Uh, this is a hybrid cruiser and something that as part of the capital plan we've been trying to keep regular purchasing of the cruiser fleet so that they're in good working order and uh, can be retired appropriately. This is something that the Capital Planning Committee kept with this year. Next year, um, an item like this would be more out in the open as far as whether we would do it or not. This year we felt fiscally okay to be able to purchase this cruiser, but next year, depending on the landscape financially of the town, we would be looking at this, you know, maybe not be requesting this purchase, but for this year, we decided to keep on the regularly scheduled purchase of police cruisers. And if you have any questions about it specifically, the police chief is here as well to answer questions. Mr. Matusko. Edward Matusko, 116 Stockbridge Street. Uh, two or three years ago, didn't we have a whole bunch of overrides where we purchased a bunch of uh, police cruiser that we use long-term money to buy a short-term product? And how come, so where does this fall in re respect to those overrides that we had a couple or three years ago? Thank you. Yep, we, we didn't have any overrides. We had uh, a debt exclusion ballot on some purchases a few years ago, but we haven't had any overrides. There was a number of years ago, I think we purchased more than one police cruiser in a year, but we've been doing this regular purchasing of police cruisers within the levy so that we don't run into a p position where we need more than one cruiser in a year and we'd have to go to a debt exclusion. Uh, excuse me, Adam, excuse me, let's go 116 Stockbridge again. The way that I read it, when I voted on the overrides that we had a couple of years ago, it was for a nine or ten year note that we went and borrowed money to buy a car and it was for the police department. Now, maybe I misunderstood it. I'm not gonna say that I didn't, but it seems to me that what, that's, what we did is we used long-term money to buy a short-term product. 
And I don't know how, you, everybody's been talking about a $12 tax rate. If you factor in all the overrides, what is our tax rate actually at this point? I, I don't totally understand the question. I don't know if anybody else has an answer. These things are within the levy right now. These are not debt exclusions uh, to borrow. So these are within the levy. I, I myself am uh, not voting for any of these. Another one of the citizens came up. It's 260 some odd thousand dollars worth of capital projects that I don't feel we need right now at this point. Uh, I think we could hold off to annual meeting on most of this stuff, but uh, two years ago, I think we did the debt exclusions because they were behind so many police cruisers that they had, to, they had wanted to catch up because the new cruisers that were coming out weren't the same as the old cruisers. They needed to adjust all the bars and uh, lights and all the inside fixtures, the radios and things like that. So that's where the price went up and where, where two years ago we went and spent a little extra money to catch up on the police cruisers. Mr. Monterey. Mr. Parmar. Charge Old Parmar, 72 Road. Road. Uh, my only question is how will this affect buying of other equipment such as that the police force might need in the future? in terms of spending this money now on the, the cruiser or saving it for next year and spending it on maybe more critical equipment that might be required in the future or, or, or how, based on budget cuts that might or might not happen. Thank you. Mr. Moderator. Okay, police chief would like to speak. I just wanted to answer that question really quickly, Mike Mason, Chief of Police. Um, I don't recall, as far as the, uh, uh, the, the debt exclusion question, um, I, we did buy a couple, two police cruisers, I think four or five years ago. That was the last time we bought two in the same year. Every year after that, it's been a single purchase because we, did, we were able to catch up. Uh, every year, from to my knowledge, it's only come from capital expenditures, and it's only been uh, it's within borrow within the levy, so it's never affected uh, taxes. As far as other purchases, um, when Christian was the chair of the select board, he instituted a 10-year capital plan for all department heads. That's something that we've stayed up stayed on top of. So there are no uh, other more important items in next year than a police cruiser. That's just something that we always have to stay on top of. Once we start to fall behind in that area, the maintenance costs go through the roof and we end up spending more money fixing cars than we do, than, than really what they're worth. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Okay, somebody in the back. Johnny Michikowski, 269 Bay Road. Question I have, uh, the police details that we do, seems to do a lot of them. Do we get money for the cruisers in that, and do they go to a specific fund for cruisers, for upkeep and new purchases? So one of the one of the things that I actually did bring along with me is is actually exactly what you asked. We charge two different fees for police details with, uh, as it relates to cruisers. We charge an administrative fee, which essentially is a, a ten percent billing on top of whatever the detail costs, and, and in any detail that requires a cruiser, as opposed to just an officer standing out there, we charge twenty dollars an hour to the contractor who requires those services. Uh, we actually just recently requested the numbers so I had them here today for FY20, um, just with those two uh, charges, we've uh, been able to, the money goes into the general fund though, it doesn't go into capital, that's the only difference, but it's almost $37,000 just for FY20. 
That is actually the cost of what the car itself costs. Obviously, as John mentioned, there's the cruiser camera, the strobe lights, the radios, radars, and all that, that makes, and the hybrid that makes the cost go up. But this gets put into the general fund annually with those fees that we charge and essentially pays for the car itself. So the answer is yes. It doesn't go into the capital fund. I, I can't answer the specifics on that, but I do know it goes back to the town. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Moriarty. Just a quick question. Uh, we're talking about hybrid cars. Uh, how much more are we paying for this hybrid car? And zero. Three thousand uh, dollars. I guess that's the question. I mean, everybody wants to do this, but can we afford it right now? Do we get a regular cruiser that can be regularly maintained easier with our mechanics that we have in town, or do we start spending a lot of extra money that may or may not have a uh, return? Okay, you got somebody else on? Yeah, I'll that you. As a follow-up question, to name and address, please. So on the 16 Barstow, follow-up question to the last speaker: How much are we saving on fuel costs with the hybrid versus the traditional? So we only have our first hybrid right now. I think uh, Sergeant Romano is actually driving it around right now. Uh, the the early numbers just from like the sticker price are telling us that the fuel savings is going to be exponential. We are going to get that three thousand dollars back and then some. There's no question about it. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions on this? Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. All those opposed? Okay. Uh, motion passes 126 to 4. Right. Motion 7.3. Move that the town appropriate $21,250 to pay costs of purchasing ballistic vests for the police department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet the appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, section 71 of the general laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? And a second. Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley. Okay, uh, this, this motion, 7.3, is for the police department's five-year scheduled replacement of its ballistic vests. Uh, this is something, I, looking around here, they're wearing them as we speak, something that needs to get replaced on a five-year schedule, and uh, it's something we're just committed to paying for. If this would come, funding for this is within the levy, so this does not affect the tax rate that's already built into that that, that number we presented in Article 2. Thank you. Any questions on this article? Motion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Yeah. Motion passes 129 to 1. Motion 7.4, move that the town appropriate $64,575 to pay costs of purchasing and equipping a vehicle for the fire department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the select board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to chapter 44, 
Section 7.1 of the General Laws or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? And a second? Mr. Stanley, please. Okay, again, this, this article, seven, or motion 7.4, is for borrowing within the levy, so it's already built into the budget, um, to purchase the fire department's deputy chief's administrative vehicle. Currently, that vehicle is in need of repairs. I kind of feel like we're in this garage, like we should have it pull through here so you can see what the current one looks like, but um, it's an old car that is in, in need of replacement and repairs. Uh, this is a, a planned replacement, again, um, and something on the capital committee we felt was needed for the fire department. I don't know if you have any questions about it. I don't know the, the details of this particular vehicle, um, but it is a, a replacement for that administrative purpose. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Any questions on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you, any opposed? Mm. Motion passes 126 to four. Motion 7.5. Move that the town appropriate $35,000 to pay costs of purchasing extraction, extrication equipment and airbags for the fire department, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 7, 1 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? Second? Mr. Stanley, please. Motion 7.5 here, just to repeat myself, this is again borrowed within the levy, so within our, our, our expenses that we've already planned. Um, and this is for the fire department's accident scene extrication equipment and airbags that are nearing the end of their useful life. Again, this is a planned replacement of this emergency first response equipment um, and something that has been has been in the capital plan for a while. So this is something we just saw was a real need for the town to have working first responding equipment like this, this year. Thank you. Any questions on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you, any opposed? Motion passes 127 to 3. Okay, last motion on this article. Move that the town appropriate $40,000 to pay costs of purchasing and equipping a mower for the Department of Public Works, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 7, 1 of the General Laws, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore. Any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Chapter 44, Section 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount. Do I have a motion? 
Second. Motion and a second. Mr. Stanley, please. Okay, motion 7.6 is for a mower. Uh, this mower is a replacement mower that would be used for the West Street Common and Town Parks. Um, again, this item, the borrowing is within the levy, so it's already built into the budget. And I ask myself with this motion, you know, a mower, do we really need it for the Town Common, for the Turka Park, all these things. However, I look at it that the DPW hasn't asked for anything in capital on this whole, this whole, the capital plan at all. Um, so there have been no dump trucks, no excavation equipment, no plows, no tractors, no nothing. This is their number one thing they felt they needed this year to pay for, to have for the town. And if you look at the town right now, there's a lot of people in the common and in the parks and all these areas. And so it is something to keep the town pretty, keep the town looking good at this time, um, to have a mower to keep all these things up. Sorry. <laughs> so um, that's just my little sales pitch on this mower because it is the one thing uh, DPW is asking for and the most critical piece. They're not asking for anything else. Um, here for the capital plan. And so I see this as a need for them. Um, I don't know if there are any other questions. Thank you. Anybody have questions on this one? Yes, ma'am. Cheryl Crudis, 27 Meadow Street. Can you speak louder, please? Okay. Um, I just had a question. What happened to the $30,000 mower we approved last year? Okay, the question is what happened to the $30,000 mower we passed last year, but I think that was at the annual meeting. Yeah, I, I don't believe that got approved. Um, I think that was turned down in debt exclusion, I believe. That is correct. Mr. Phil? David Phil, 3990 Road, and I, I know I'm going to hear about this because DPW is my department, but... Um, Hang on, there's way too much feedback. Try again. Test, test. Better? All right. David Phil, 39 Knightley Road, and I know I'm going to hear about this because there's DPW guys here and it's my department, but I think there's better use of uh, town funds this year than buying another mower when what we have is serviceable. So, that's it. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments on this? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? Is there anybody that can't see me out there that's voting no? Because I can't see between these two little walls between the doors. Keep them up because I got to count. Keep them up. I got thirty one against ninety nine four. What's that? Okay. All those in favor, put your cards back up. I'll count those. Thank you. 
favor, 31 against. It's two thirds. Two thirds. So motion fails. Thank you. Yes. Point of order, please. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I think you should have also been clear to the people who were supporting the motion that they should also move to where you could see them. It's possible you didn't count anybody, and I would prefer to have counters in this kind of a situation. Thank you. Well, I, I, I got everybody that I could see out back. I asked them to move if they couldn't see me, so. All right, moving on. We question on whether we have a quorum or not. So now we got to count everybody that's still here. So bear with me a moment. Uh, take a section, you guys. I'll get up front here. people here. Quorum is a hundred. The quorum was called, so we do not have a quorum. The meeting has to end. Hang on a second. All right, we got questions. We got, we'll deal with that in a minute. I want to, questions outside. Michelle Morris Friedman, 45 Roosevelt Street. I read through the state um, guidelines around COVID and I believe we are allowed to have a reduced co quorum because of COVID. I believe 50% of the regular, my husband says 60 people would make a quorum under COVID. 
Okay, well that is somewhat true, but it is not, it, it, you, there's a certain process that has to happen, and it involves the select board posting a notice, etc., etc. We do not qualify for that on meeting day. Okay, we can't, no, we can't do anything. All right, we're going to have to talk about this to see what we're going to do. So give us five minutes. We'll be right back with you. We've got to decide how the meeting is going to end today.
Today, so I would like to. I will accept a motion to dissolve the uh, the the, uh, the articles that are left are going to be taken up at the spring town meeting unless somebody decides that they need a special meeting for it. But everybody's decided that, that it's time to call this one done. So I would. I'll accept a motion to dissolve, please. Second. Second. All those in favor. Thank you all very much for coming out. I appreciate it. Thanks to Hadley Media for setting this up, tearing it down. All the police and fire people, whoever set up this venue, again, thank you very much. <laughs>